questions you wanted answers were um, why Pirate Party is popular in Iceland and what do you do different that attracts the support of, well, actually last poll was 29%, which is uh, bizarre, uh, and we really don't know what's going on. Um, I think that uh, I just want to uh, frame a few things here. Like, first of all, uh, what we did was that we made a very clear core policy where we looked at uh, uh, basic rights around 25, human rights around 21st century uh, realities where we live in a borderless world uh, and where our digital persona uh, leaves a, a shadow uh, that is collected uh, uh, by telecom companies and uh, national security agencies. Uh, and where we have all the technology to uh, be able to have uh, very good uh, and thorough Freedom of Information Act uh, that would enable the general public to make informed decisions. Um, so um, through the core policy uh, of the Pirate Party, we have been able to, um, uh, even if we don't have a constructive policy in every field, we only got three parliamentarians uh, uh, through our 5% in the last elections. Uh, I think that people like that we just, we're not pretending to be anything else than we are. We're just uh, sort of normal geeks or normal people uh, who don't dress up uh, uh, in a language of the politician. I think that's quite uh, important. But uh, we sort of started uh, around something called the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative. Uh, it was uh, something that I managed to get through the parliament uh, when I was a new parliamentarian in 2010, uh, which uh, is about uh, pulling together all the best possible laws in order to have freedom of information, expression, and privacy uh, collected under one, one umbrella in Iceland. Uh, and. Um, it was very important to get people inside the parliament that would carry on uh, making sure that this uh, parliamentary resolution that was uh, unanimously adopted in the Icelandic parliament. Um, so, uh, hence the Pirate Party, the idea of it was uh, actually uh, manifested uh, at a board meeting for the, uh, the National Modern Media Institute. Um, I think because um, the Pirate Party also focuses primarily uh, I would say, our direct democracy models. Uh, and uh, our main quest uh, is to uh, both help other uh, politicians and parliamentarians understand uh, the stuff we're all talking about tonight uh, and in relation to uh, you know, the impact that uh, living online, which everybody actually does in the Western world, uh, in some form or shape, uh, the impact it has on legislation and how we need to uh, actually speed up uh, uh, guidelines and guards uh, for our digital persona. Uh, if you want to encourage people to be a part of um, uh, direct democracy, you have to ensure that they can do so uh, with all the privacy that we expect uh, to have when we do normal democracy. Uh, the most important challenge is actually to get have people be engaged and interested to participate uh, and to actually take on the responsibility of being the system and understanding that they will never have the system they desire to have uh, if they don't become a part of co-creating it. Um, sort of in order to get a, a better and further understanding about uh, the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative, the Pirate Party's ideas and uh, the democracy and digital era. I, I, uh, I urge you to read um, uh, the new internationalist uh, edition that uh, I got the honor to guest edit uh, recently. Uh, there are very many excellent articles in that that sort of maps out uh, some of the challenges uh, we're faced with. Uh, I am going uh, on Wednesday to uh, attend the International Parliamentarian Union Assembly and uh, I have managed to put on the agenda there uh, a comprehensive uh, uh, parliamentary resolution that uh, I have been tasked to uh, make uh, with a co-rapporteur from South Korea uh, on, based on Snowden's first interview where he uh, talks about that we need to both frame our local and global legislative uh, uh, text in relation to um, uh, 
the reality we live in, where our uh, privacy is no longer sacred, uh, even if it's a part of our constitutions. The, the largest and most uh, important task is to actually make parliamentarians aware of it, so I'm very lucky to have uh, access to 1,000 parliamentarians from 166 countries to uh, discuss privacy with and to hopefully have them adopt uh, uh, you know, a, a little bit radical uh, uh, solutions on how we uh, ensure privacy, uh, both offline and online, and particularly online. So, uh, and oh yeah, you wanted me to talk about the constitution, I'll talk very quickly about it. Uh, so Iceland, after the, in the aftermath of the uh, financial crisis, crisis are of course very good because it enables uh, real change uh, or it at least opens a window for it. So uh, one of the demands was that uh, the Icelandic people would get to uh, uh, write their own constitution and uh, or at least have uh, been able to, uh, in a sense, uh, co-create it. And uh, so there was a new constitution written by and for the people of Iceland. In it were very many beautiful things, such as uh, that the, the internet, uh, the rights to access to the internet would be constitutional, and the third generational uh, freedom of information act. Uh, there is, however, we just noticed we're looking through it today, a uh, very fundamental thing lacking because this was written pre Snowden. Uh, there is a, a focus on privacy lacking in it, but. Uh, unfortunately, when you want uh, big changes like the new constitution uh, has, uh, which is of course about a lot more than uh, freedom of information, it's about restructuring our society and having a three, uh, a proper three division of power, the powers at hand will do everything to destroy it. So they put the new constitution in a coma, uh, but uh, I'm on a mission to try to rewake it. So uh, the nation is sort of uh, the night and the the new constitution is the uh, sleeping beauty, and hopefully we'll be able to wake it with a big sloppy kiss one day soon. <laughs> um, thank you.